Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you five of my favorite music video style effects. So this is going to include flickering strobes, color grading, and even that scribble effect that you often see. So to begin, I just got a couple of example clips here for us to begin working on. And the first effect that is probably most commonly associated with music videos is the strobe and flicker. And when you're working in Premiere Pro, the cool part is there's actually an effect for this. You don't have to cut each different clip. So let's open up the effects panel and under the search bar, let's search for strobe and you should find it in the stylized video effects folder. So strobe light is something that you can click and drag onto the clips and then you have a whole bunch of different parameters, but they're not really confusing. Let me just break it down for you. The strobe color is what color you want it to flash. So you can do the typical black, or if you wanted, you could do colorful strobes like red, blue, green, and you could even have them operate on something like a blending mode like add and things like that if you want to do cool flashes. However, there's also the ability to make the strobe operate by making it transparent, which is essentially just going to show through whatever's underneath. So in this case, there's nothing underneath this clip, so that's why it's showing black. But if I did put a clip underneath, then the other clip would show. Additionally, you have the blend with original, which is how transparent or opaque do you want this effect to be. And then you have the strobe duration and period. So once every half a second is what this is. And if I play, you'll see what that looks like. It goes on for half a second, off for half a second. But if I turn this up down to a much lower percentage, so like 0.1 seconds on in a 0.2 second duration, then you'll see that it'll start to flicker a lot faster and you get that typical strobe effect that you might associate with music videos. So if you're wondering how to make this only last on a certain portion of the clip, you basically can do that by animating these with keyframes. So if I click this stopwatch icon on any of these, I can make it transition from one thing to another. So I could transition colors or make it slower or faster. But what you could do is set a blend with original where you want it to start set that at 100% so that it's not showing, and then one frame over, set it to 0%, and what you'll get is a strobe will start at that keyframe, and then when you want to cut it off, do the same thing except opposite. So set it to 100 to make it last that full duration, then go one frame over and set it to zero again. Now the strobe will only last in the duration of those keyframes, and if you were to put another clip underneath it, that's how you could transition into another clip with the strobes is by doing it that way and then just ending the clip. So that's how to create a strobe effect and transition into another clip with it. But let's continue this video with the second effect and probably one of the coolest but easiest things to do is by overlaying film leader or film reel clip or stock footage onto the clip to create cool flashes of effects and grain. So here's a stock film leader that someone was putting up for free use on YouTube. I'll link you guys to this one. But there's a ton of them out there. Just make sure what the copyright and the creative license is for however you want to use it. So basically what you'll do is place this on top of whatever clip or section of clips you want. And in this case, I downloaded it from YouTube and it's kind of not the right size. But it doesn't really matter because even if I scale it up, I'm not really looking for a sharp image. So I'll go to the effects control. I'll scale this up to match my sequence size, and then I'll set it to a blending mode of something like screen. You could also do lighten, or if you want a more harsh effect, you could try color dodge. Really screen is probably my first choice. And you can see when I play it back, it creates a really cool flicker and film grain over the video, which you might often see in many music videos, especially that part where different numbers flash up in front of the screen. Of course, these clips are gonna be longer than perhaps the clip or section that you wanna put them on. So find an interesting portion that you want to blend and cut it down to size so that it matches your clips. And if you want to make things a little bit darker, if they're standing out too much, you can always lower the opacity. Just make sure you turn the animation off so it's consistent. You can lower the opacity to lower the strength of the effect. Or you can actually go into the Lumetri Color tab in the basic correction of this clip and turn down things like the exposure to darken it up and screen will only pick up the brighter areas. So you can kind of blend it in a bit better and make it not stand out as much if you don't want it to. So the third effect that I'm going to show you guys how to do is how to do a ghost trail or echoey effect on your clips. So if I click on my clip that I want to affect, 
and head over to my effects tab, I can search for an effect called echo and it should be under the time video folder. But I can click and drag this onto my clips or adjustment layers over top of the clips if I want. And then go into the effects control panel and there's a few things I can adjust here, just like the strobe light. So I can affect the echo time, which is the amount of delay. So you want this to trail negative 0.033 behind or positive ahead. And how do you want it to blend? Do you want it to blend on add, maximum, minimum, screen, all these different blending modes for you. And then you have the decay. For each echo, how less strong do you want it to be? So I could decay by half. And then you have the number of echoes. So one, two, three, however many you want. The stronger it is, the more crazy of an effect it might look like. So I'll do two echoes with a starting intensity of one and a delay of two thirds of a second. So when I press play, you can see there's a really cool delay whenever there's camera movement or hand movement. So that's the time echo. You can play around with a closer echo time if you want the ghost trails to follow a lot more closely. Or you could play around with making it further behind if you want much more separate trails. And for the next effect, it's a bit more general, less specific, but let's talk about getting a nice color grading for your music video. So if I click on my project media bin and I go to file, new, adjustment layer, you should see a blank adjustment layer pop up in your media bin. And I can click and drag this on top of tracks. And what these are are just blank slates for us to add effects onto that will affect all the clips beneath it. So any of the effects that we've been talking about previously, you could do it in this way too. If you want to stretch them out over multiple cuts, or if you want, you can use these to create color grading. So if I go into the Lumetri color tab, yes, you could just grade right onto clips. However, working on the adjustment layer gives us a bit more flexibility. So here there's a handful of different panels for us to color correct and color grade creatively. I actually have a full separate tutorial and several tutorials just on color grading which I'd recommend checking out for a more thorough walkthrough. But basically you have your color correction options, like fixing the exposure, contrast if you need to. But in the creative section is where you can add some of these preset creative looks and scroll through what Premiere comes built in with. So they have different Fuji or Kodak film looks. You can turn down the intensity if you want. And that's a quick way to get a preset color grade. But there is a ton of more flexibility that you can do like you can add a bit of that faded film look. You can play around with the saturation. You can go into other tabs like curves if you want to have a full control over all the color channel curves. You can go into the color wheels, adjust things like the mid-tone colors, the highlight colors to create some cool color effects and tinting. However, for this section, I'd urge you to check out some of my separate videos that are focused solely on color grading for a better walkthrough, which I'll link after the video. But that's the menu to check out for all of your color grading and adjusting needs. Now the last effect that I'm going to show you guys is the popular scribble effect. And this one's actually done in After Effects. And I also have a full video separately dedicated to this scribble because it's a bit longer of a process. But to introduce you to it, what you do is you click on the clip that you want to create those scribble effects onto and you right click and you replace it with an After Effects composition. What this is going to do is going to open up a project in After Effects with just this clip and we're going to, it's going to allow us to use the write on features in After Effects to scribble and draw on the clip and then save it back and when we go back to Premiere you should see that it's a scribble effect. Basically what you want to do is grab your brush tool, make sure you set your paint and brush size to whatever size and style you want and let's pull this down so we can see more options here and for the duration you want to set it to single frame. There's other options that I explained in the separate video, but when you set it to single frame and you start painting, you can start creating paint lines on one frame. And then when you go to the next frame over, everything starts over and you create your different drawings. So you can create scribbles that appear frame by frame and create a rotoscopy type of animation. If you're on a Mac, you can hold command and move your arrow key over one frame at a time for a faster workflow. If you're on Windows, I believe it's control arrow. But basically you just work through a ton of frames and then you end up with a couple seconds of a cool flashing trace draw effect and you can get as creative as you want. So when I play that back, you see all those different frames combined to make a pretty cool animation. And of course, this is something that you gotta take your time on to really get something cool. So if you close this, press save, you should see it 
reflect your changes that you made in After Effects to create your cool drawing effect. So those are some of my favorite music video effects that I want to share with you guys. You definitely don't have to use them all at once, but hopefully you picked up a few that you can add in your arsenal of video editing effects. And of course, you don't have to do these with music videos, just what I kind of associate or took inspiration from. If you guys are not subscribed to my channel, then make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for all my future videos. And of course, like, comment, let me know what you thought. You can find me on social media at Justin OD Show on Instagram, Twitter, if you want to reach out to me. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.